Welcome to 10.1, use properties of tangents. So how do I use properties of tangents or a tangent uh, to a circle? So before we focus on tangent, let's remind ourselves about a circle. And you remember that a circle is a set of all points in a plane that are equidistant. Remember equidistance means that it's the same distance from a given point called the center. So this is the center of this particular circle, but the center is not part of the circle. The circle is all points that are equidistant from this other particular point, which is called the center. And what is that? And also, Notice that in the definition is in a plane. Hey, if we did not include the in the plane part of the definition, what would the shape be of a, a figure that is uh, all points that are equidistant from a particular uh, point? It would not be a circle, it would be a sphere, like a ball. Uh, so that's why we have to say, for a circle, we have to say that it's coplanar or all the points are in a plane. So we said <clears throat> each of these points that are coplanar are equidistant from the, the center. And what is that distance? That distance is called the radius. So there are all these different radii going out and they're all the same distance uh, from the center to the circle. Here are some new characteristics that might be new for you. Chord. I know it says CH, but uh, it's pronounced chord. A chord is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. So when we go from circle to circle, like I say here, circle to circle, that is called a chord. And a diameter, you're familiar with that, a diameter is a chord. It goes from circle to circle, but it's a unique chord because that chord goes through the center. So a diameter is a chord. And as you know, a diameter is also twice the distance of the radius. So if this radius was 10, then the diameter, of course, would be uh, 20. And then secant might be another new term for you. It is a line that intersects a circle in two points. So here is your line, and it's intersecting the circle at two individual points. If you have a line that intersects the circle, but only at one point, that is called a tangent. A tangent's a line that's in the plane of a circle. That's interesting also, we gotta make sure to emphasize that. A secant is going to be in the plane of the circle. It has to be if it's intersecting the circle twice. But a tangent has to be in, not only does it intersect the circle once, but it also has to be in the same plane as the circle. And we're going to learn more about this uh, tangent in just a minute. So here's another scenario. And let's uh, remind ourselves, okay, this is a circle. So the circle is all of these points that are equidistant from the center. And this distance from the center to the circle or same distance over here, that's the radius. The diameter is a chord, so here is a chord going from A to G. That's a chord. Let me just, uh, I guess I can do that. So that's all right, chord there. And then, <clears throat> so just the segment, that's a chord. But then the line that goes through that, that would call, be called a secant. So maybe I can write this bigger. Secant, I don't know if that's helpful. <clears throat> but that's the entire line. Got that? So the secant is the entire line that intersects the circle at two points, and the chord is just the segment that goes from circle to circle. And remember that the a diameter is also a chord because it goes from cent oh, sorry from circle to circle, and uh, happens also uh, to go through the, the center. And then here's another line, <clears throat> and this line intersects the circle only at one point, and so this is a tangent, a tangent line. And it could be a tangent ray, that's okay, if it uh, starts here and shoots off in this direction, 
uh, or it could be a segment tangent that uh, is just, instead of it being a line, it could be a segment. But the main point is that it intersects the, tan the circle only at one point. And let me also emphasize the difference between a diameter and the diameter. So this segment here uh, from A to B is A diameter. Uh, and here's another diameter, for example. I could go over, over here. But the diameter is a measurement. <clears throat> and, yep. Oh, and also, same thing with radius. That A radius, going from center to circle, uh, here's another radius, here's another radius, so all of these are radii, that's a, a radius. Uh, in contrast to the radius, when people say, uh, use the definite article of the radius, they're talking about what is the distance from the center to the circle. So let's measure that. <clears throat> Here when we have circles on a coordinate plane, it's easy for us to measure, for example, the radius of, and this is the symbol for circle, kind of makes sense, huh? So you say this as circle A. A is your center. Always identify a circle by its center point, but remember again that the center is not part of the circle. The circle is all points that are equidistant and coplanar. Uh, equidistant from the center and our coplanar. Okay. And so the radius, the radius of circle A, all I have to do, and, and it is true that this is a radius and this is a radius, but the radius, uh, the easiest way to measure it, I could do the distance formula between those two points if I knew this point exactly, but the easiest way to do it is to look for a horizontal or a vertical uh, radius, a radii, no, a radius. So one, two, three, and looks like each block is worth uh, one unit. So the radius there is three, and obviously also the diameter uh, then would be six. And notice that if I was to have done uh, measure this vertically, it'd be the same. The radius is three, and if I was to extend down here. The diameter is uh, six for that particular circle. Over for this one, the radius is two, and the diameter would be two plus two, uh, which is four. Now for these, they're kind of on top of each other. So which one is the center for the big one? Okay, that's this guy here. So one, two, three. So the radius for the larger one, I can see it also if I go off in this direction, the radius for this larger one, is three, so the diameter I know, multiply that times two, is gonna be six. And the diameter, or the radius, for the smaller one is two. Okay, and the diameter, of course, would be uh, four. In fact, talking about different circles, notice here on your notes <clears throat> that we have coplanar circles. We can talk about how they interact with each other. The one we were just looking at was one similar to here where they share only one point. And we're gonna call that tangent circles. Remember how if you have a line that cuts through a circle, that's called a secant, if it intersects twice. If it intersects the uh, circle only once, that's called a tangent. And so let's use that same terminology for tangent. It intersects the circle only once. So these two circles up on top here, are tangent circles. They uh, touch each other only once. And same thing with uh, these two here. They only touch each other once. In contrast to here, these uh, coplanar circles, they touch each other twice. They overlap uh, each other. And then these are concentric. Concentric might be a new word for you. Con means with, and centric means center. So you would say a translation of that could, could be uh, with the same center. So these two, the inner circle here and outer circle, uh, both share the same center. And so these two uh, circles are concentric, or concentric, 
concentric. Uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure why they drew these two circles. Uh, these two circles are obviously not concentric. They do not share the same uh, center. And then we can also talk about uh, when two uh, circles share the same tangent line. So here are two circles. And remember, tangent means that they intersect, or that it intersects the or the line intersects the uh, uh, circle only at one point, and then the same line that is tangent to the first circle is also tangent to the second circle, meaning that it intersects this circle only at one, one point. And here's another way that you can have a common tangent is uh, in this uh, arrangement or, or format. And yes, you could draw another uh, let's just do this. You could draw another tangent line coming through. It's not going to go through, I don't want to draw that as if it's going through that same point of tangency. It's going to be a different point. And then same thing over here. It's going to, so you can have all kinds of different, I guess four, right? A total of four different uh, tangent lines uh, through that. Okay, let's talk about tangent lines now. This is really the end of our of the main focus <clears throat> here. Once we get the foundational uh, principles and are familiar with this different terminology, then it's really helpful for us to put our energies into this uh, uh, tangent line because uh, that's where we're gonna put up most of our focus. Now a tangent line is always gonna be, now remember, it uh, intersects the circle only at one place but also it's always perpendicular to a radius that whose endpoint is uh, that point of tangency. So remember that one point that the tangent line touches the circle, we call that the point of tangency. And then if I extend a ray, not a ray, but a uh, segment from that point of tangency to the circle, that's a radius, of course, and the angle between that radius, that particular radius and the tangent line will always be 90 degrees, always be perpendicular. And you remember that the symbol for perpendicular is an upside down T. And so when you see the word or think of the word tangent, think of a big T there. And remember that when in order for it to be if and only if a line is uh, perpendicular to a radius then it is tangent and the opposite is also true that a tangent is always going to be perpendicular to a radius so when you hear the word tangent think of t or when you see hey this is guy is perpendicular to the radius and it touches the circle only at one point, uh, therefore this is a tangent line. Okay, so sometimes they'll tell you that it's a tangent line and you know then that it is gonna be perpendicular to a radius that goes through there or sometimes they will tell you it is perpendicular and intersects the circle only at one point and then you know for sure that this is a tangent line. Okay. Another little interesting fact that's helpful for us is that when you have a tangent segment or ray or line, doesn't really matter, but let's talk about just the segment part of it. When you have a tangent segment and that intersects with another tangent segment, then those two segments are going to be congruent. Those two segments are going to be congruent. So when we start with tangent segments, two segments that are tangent to the circle, and they intersect, they're going to create two segments that are congruent. Okay, so now let's uh, put this stuff to use. Here they are saying, I got this diagram uh, here, and I know these lengths are given to me, and they're asking me, is a segment ST, is this tangent to this circle P? So how do I figure that out? How do I know whether or not this segment is tangent to this circle? 
Well, remember we said that if it is tangent, tangent, you're thinking of T, thinking of T, you're thinking of perpendicular. Okay, so this radius, in order for S, uh, segment ST to be tangent, then it must be perpendicular to this, uh, this, this radius, or yeah, this radius. And wait a second, if this is a perpendicular angle, then what kind of a triangle is this? Hey, this is a right triangle. If you want to look at it this way, this is how we're accustomed to seeing a right triangle. So here's your right angle, and here are your two legs for the right triangle, and across from this right angle, this would be your hypotenuse. All the way across here, that would be your uh, hypotenuse. So that will be a right triangle if this segment is tangent to this circle. There's a bunch of ifs there, isn't there. So how do we determine whether or not this is tangent to the circle? Well, we determine whether or not it is perpendicular to the radius. And how do I determine whether or not it's perpendicular to the radius? Well, if this was perpendicular, then the length of these sides is going to be according to the Pythagorean theorem, right? And remember, a squared, I should write that here, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And remember that c squared, the c, is always going to be your hypotenuse. It's always going to be your hypotenuse. So let's flip this thing back around. And here's your right, yeah, we're asking the question, is this a right angle? If it was, then across from here would be your hypotenuse. Okay, so that's, that's the length that's going to go in for C. So now the question is, okay, I know this length here is 35, this leg is 35, and I know this is 12, and hey, this is a radius, so this other radius here is also going to be 12, but then what does this 37 refer to? It can, get, uh, it can get confusing sometimes because the 37, does it refer to this entire segment length or just the segment length outside of the circle? And if you think about it, you'll realize, hey, wait a second, it has to refer to the entire uh, length here uh, because that would not make sense for this, this length over here, this 35, to be longer than 37. And also, remember, this would be a, a right triangle. And so this uh, length here would be the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always the longer length. Okay, so be careful. When you see a number out here, ask yourself, does it refer to just the outside segment or the entire uh, segment? So now we're ready. Uh, let's put it into our Pythagorean theorem. And 37 is going to go in for c squared. Here's 37. And then uh, 12, let's put that in.